Hey guys, welcome to the beautiful snowy mountains. I'm really excited for this weekend. Um, it's my first time exploring the high country and I want to come here for a very long time, so very excited to be here. And man, just have a look at the place. It's absolutely stunning, eh? Oh, some beautiful, beautiful country. Um, yeah, the plan is to spend the next few days here, sort of uh, three, three nights and four days. Um, yeah, just exploring the area and uh, yeah, fishing the stream behind me. The stream's stocked with uh, I think rainbow trout and brook trout as well, so Never fished for trout before, so we still have to see how we go. Um, I don't have a fly, I've never fly fished before, so I don't have a fly rod. I've just got my normal spinner rod with me, and I'm just some lures. So, fingers crossed we can uh, yeah, land a trout for dinner, because that would be pretty nice. Um, but yeah, really excited for this weekend, just, uh, yeah, just to spend a couple of days out here immersing myself in this beautiful landscape. So, it's going to be a really nice weekend. Um, it's already about 5 o'clock, it took me about pff, 7 hours to drive here, it's a bit of a trek. Um, and about an hour and a half to hike into this point. It's starting to get a little bit late in the day, so I um, might just go for a little bit more of a wander around and see if I can find a nice spot to set up camp. So, yeah, hope you guys stick around. I think it's going to be a really nice weekend. Yeah, so I'm actually having a little bit of a trouble trying to find a campsite. I thought it was going to be nice and easy here considering how open it is, but I know that grass over there, it's just kind of real thick lumps of grass and it's not going to be very comfortable to, yeah, to sleep on and plus you can't have a fire over there, it's just going to burn the whole place down. So There is a little section just behind me over here that I found, it's a different kind of grass so you could probably sleep on top of it, but I don't know, same deal again, it's a little bit windy so I don't ever want to have a fire out in the open, so I could easily just not have a fire tonight, but it's meant to get a little bit chilly tonight, so I wouldn't mind having one. Um, but to be honest, the uh, probably best spot I've seen is actually back where I was filming the intro. There's actually a pretty um, clear level area. Um, it wasn't grass, it's kind of like, it was a little bit of grass, but more soil based. So, might go back to that spot. Um, I'll have a little bit more of a wander around here and see what I can find, but if not, I might just have to backtrack to that spot. Yeah, so we're looking at it, you think this would be great to camp amongst, but yeah, these little grassy balls, that thick and <laughs> we're very uncomfortable to sleep on top of that so and plus like I said there's no way you could have a fire out here and then up amongst the trees as you can see but it's just so dense and scrubby so I can't even sort of go up in the trees and get a, away from it so it's a little bit tricky down here not sure what I'm gonna do yeah, so here's a nice clear flat area that would be perfect for a campsite though. If you take a closer look, I don't know if you'll be able to tell on the camera, but it's really, really spongy the ground here, so it's a lot of water underneath here, so yeah, I don't even think this will do. I'll have to keep looking around. Yeah, so this is when I wish I brought the hammock with me. Unfortunately, I've only got the, uh, the bivvy with me today, so there's plenty of trees around here that could um, hang up the hammock between, but I know with a bivy, you kind of don't want to be sleeping on a damp ground, so I'll have to keep looking around. Oh man, it's a good exercise walking through this grass. I think it's going to be burning tomorrow. Um, yeah, I think I'm going to go back to the original site. I can't quite find a yeah half decent spot around here, and I know there's a pretty good one back there, so I think it's probably going to be the best option because the sun's starting to dip behind the ridge now, so. I don't want to waste too much more time, so we'll head back there. Yeah, so I think this spot will do. I'll give you a quick look around to show you what I'm working with. So yeah, not a bad view from up here. 
I've got the stream running right in front of me as well, so if I want to fish that later this afternoon if I've got um, time, or maybe in the morning. And then in terms of the campsite, it's so relatively clear and flat, which is good. And there's some bare ground around here, I could have the fire if I want to. So yeah, can't complain about this. Alright, so in terms of sleeping tonight, I'm going to use my Outdoor Research Helium Bivy um, and just my Nemo Astra Air inflatable mat and then just put a, a ground sheet underneath that. Um, I also do have a, my brand new Alton Goods 3x3 meter tarp, which I really hope I can try and use this trip. Though here it's a little bit limited, there's no real trees I can tie around and all these trees are just <laughs> amongst all the, the scrub. So I could knock up um, sort of some, some supports for it, but running out of time, it's probably going to be dark in about an hour or so, so I'm just going to pretty much just sleep under the bivy. It's not meant to rain tonight, it's not meant to rain at all this weekend I'm pretty sure, so I think this will do. Um, but the reason I'm sleeping with the bivy and not just cowboy camping in is because there's a lot of ants running around um, and I'm pretty sure they're the jack jumper kind of ants, which are basically a big bull ant, um, a big black bull ant with these orange pincers and I know you get them a lot down in um, Tassie and you get some in the Blue Mountains and I'm pretty sure you get them in the alpine regions like the snowies. So, and I can see there's a hole right there with a couple sort of walking around the hole right now as I speak. So, yeah, it's a little bit sketchy. Um, they're pretty, they can be pretty dangerous. They have been known to sort of um, kill people in certain um, circumstances. I think if you sort of have heart issues, they can sort of send you into cardiac arrest. Um, but for a healthy person, they just give you a pretty nasty bite. So, we're going to try and avoid that as much as possible. So, I think I'll be using the, the bivy this, um, this trip. But yeah, it'd be a pretty nice spot to wake up to, I reckon. I'll probably just have the fire next to me and then just lay the bivy out here. So we'll get this set up. Yeah, then I've just got one of these Cedar Summit inflatable pillows, which are so body handy. They're packed down so small, um, and they're a really comfy pillow, so definitely worth uh, looking into them. So the way I'm going to design this fire pit is I'm going to have so these two kind of flat rocks, um, probably about a, a foot or so apart from each other. That way I can lay the, the grill on top of it. Um, I'm going to have another sort of rock just to stop some of the heat coming out and burning my hand because man, it gets so hot next to the coal. So it's nice to have like kind of like a little protector so that way you, you don't burn your knuckles. And then at the back here, um, So we'll just do something like that. That way I can sort of yeah, lay the longer sticks at the back and still have a fire going at the back and then rake some of the coals into this front section. Because quite often when you just have a circle fire pit um, or a small fire pit, 
when you're trying to cook, you basically your fire's going out because it's, it's just all over the top of it. Whereas I find this is kind of separates the fire from the cooking section. So it's, I find it's a, a pretty um, good way to yeah, cook. All right, well, I think that will do. Well, at least it's not too hard trying to find dry tinder. Plenty of uh, dead grass lying around, so this will do. How good is this place, eh? Ah, oh, that was a serenity. So much serenity. You can't get much better than this on a Friday, either. We're all feeling this world to me. Air flowing energy. Gone to soul, gone to fly. So I've just got uh, yeah, flint and steel, some charcoal. So I'll use this to get the fire started. Alright sweet, well, we're starting to get a pretty decent bed of coals down now which is just in time because it's about quarter to ten and I'm, I'm absolutely starving and tired so yeah pretty keen to get some grub on. So I'm just going to put down my um, Alton Goods titanium grill and I've just got some yeah some sausages to go with that and just some coleslaw so pretty simple dinner tonight but I think it should um, do me just fine. So I'm just going to let this heat up for a little bit and I'll get the, the snags on.
Um, but yeah, gosh, sorry guys, I haven't really been able to do, do any videos recently. I think the last video was about two months ago, which is, yeah, a long time. Um, would have liked to have got out in between, but yeah, just work life and home life has just been absolutely hectic the last, um, yeah, couple of weeks or month or two. So pretty lucky I managed to find a few days to get out this weekend because I definitely needed it. It's um, been too long since I sat around a campfire. Actually, speaking of fire, that's actually probably another reason I've really been able to get out and um, yeah, do too many videos is because basically, I don't know if you guys have seen from overseas, but basically half of New South Wales has been on fire um, the last month or two. It's insane. I think it's like over 100, 115 fires burning at the moment or something like that. It's, it's absolutely crazy. So much devastation. Um, like Sydney has pretty much been blanketed in smoke yeah, for the last month. So it's, um, yeah, it's pretty bad, really, really bad. All in the north coast and the central coast has just been burnt. Now some big fires have popped up around Sydney, around um, the Blue Mountains and Walmart National Park. And then just the other day, a big one popped up down the um, south coast, uh, just near the Butterwangs, which is, if you guys have watched a lot of my videos, you'll see I go to Butterwangs a lot. It's basically just outside the Butterwangs. Um, a big fire popped up and it's just made its way all the way to the coast, um, burnt all the way through Murray National Park and into Maroon National Park. And yeah, places like Boy Point and stuff have just Yesterday, actually, it hit Boy Point and they just absolutely copped it. Some of the footage coming out of it, it looks like bloody Armageddon. It's crazy. Um, so hopefully not, yeah, hopefully there wasn't too many properties lost because it looked pretty severe. But basically all the, um, yeah, the bush has been burnt away. One of my favourite campgrounds down the coast, that got burnt away. So it's pretty sad to see, but I don't know. It's Aussie bush. They, um, it needs to regenerate. It uses fire to regenerate. So... It's got to happen at one stage or another, but it's just still sad to see when such beautiful bushland gets burnt. But as long as um, no lives or no property gets lost, that's the main thing. But if you guys are wondering whether this is legal or not, it's, um, it's definitely legal. Um, trust me, I wasn't going to come out here when there's a fire ban on. Um, Kosciuszko National Park is pretty much one of the only national parks in New South Wales at the moment you actually have a fire. Pretty much every other national park has a, a blanket fire ban on it. So. I uh, made sure of, there was no um, no fire bans today, so um, it's all good to go. And I'm definitely going to um, put this well and truly out before I go to bed. We've got a stream right next to me, so I'm just going to go fill up um, yeah, a big bucket of that and just pour it straight over the fire. So it's well and truly out, because the last thing I want to do is start another bushfire. Our fireys have been stretched very thin, so yeah, the last thing um, I want to do is yeah, start another bushfire. Anyway, um, I think it's time to get some grub on, so I'll just get the snags on and cook that up. Yeah, so for the side, I'm just going to make a pretty simple coleslaw with a smoky chipotle uh, mayonnaise dressing it's really nice so it's a very quick and simple dinner this one just mix that through all right well i think they're about done And that temperature has dropped a lot, hey. I think it's meant to get down about four or five degrees. Um, yeah, it's night, so it's gonna be pretty chilly. Oh man, that coleslaw is so good. Mm. All right, guys, well, that's me done for tonight. So I'm just gonna finish off dinner and then put the fire out and then crawl into bed, so. Um, I'll see you guys bright and early tomorrow, and with any luck, might be able to get a trout. So, catch you then.
Yeah, so definitely got pretty chilly last night. Um, probably would have got definitely down to about zero at least. Because yeah, I woke up and there's just frost covered all over the bivy on the inside and the out. Because I'm um, having this section down last night. I don't know, just all the condensation for me, me breathing and my sweat and my stuff, I guess. Um, just, yeah, built up a layer of water on the inside and then as it got colder through the night, that just froze to crystals. So, literally I could sort of scrape my finger down and break off all the ice crystals on the inside of the bivy. So, pretty much just turned it into a, a little ice box. So, yeah, pretty chilly, but managed to pull through. Uh, but this morning's pretty nice. Uh, I think it's probably meant to get to about 18 or 19 degrees today, so pretty nice temperature. So I'm just going to yeah, finish this off and then pack this down and then I'll get the rod out and um, yeah, we'll just make our way up the stream and see if we have any luck with the, this trout, so it should be a nice day. Yeah, so I might just use this uh, little rainbow trout lure, see how that goes. This little beauty, it's a nice little brook trout. Third cast, that's what I'm talking about. Ew! How good was that? Oh, third cast. Um, I heard brook trout's a little bit elusive up here, so pretty stoked to, to land that for my first fish, so I think this is gonna be a good day. over here with some um, running water so let's go and give that a go. And I'm getting eaten by ants everywhere I go. Making uh, this very difficult. Oh man, these ants are killing me. Oh, they're eating me alive. Making this a very unenjoyable exercise. Oh man, this ant situation is pretty bad. Um, at the moment, there's so many ants just crawling all over the camera because as soon as I put the anything down for more than a few seconds, or as soon as I stand still for more than a few seconds, I'm getting swarmed by ants. So. My legs have had enough, so I think, what I think I'm going to do is just basically walk up the stream in the water. I don't have any waders or any sort of gum boots, so I'm just going to have to yeah, get the boots wet, but that's something that I'm, I'm prepared to do because these, like, look, there's ants crawling over the lens right now. It's insane, so. Yeah, I didn't see any ants yesterday, but maybe that's because I was on the move a lot. But yeah, as soon as you stand still, bloody hell, they come out in swarms, so. Uh, yeah, it's going to walk up the, the stream, and that way I should be able to fish a bit easier as well.
<laughs> oh, are you kidding? <laughs> Damn it. I think there's, uh, I think there's another little brookie. <laughs> See, he wasn't quite in the book, I'm guessing. It's so funny how quickly they just died out. Like, I, the lure was only sort of, yeah, the length of the rod away, and he just, boom, quickly smashed it. That was good, because I was starting to get a little bit worried that there wasn't any more fish in this, this stream. So I've been, uh, it's been about an hour since my um, first fish, so it's good to see I nearly caught a second one. Alright, well this looks like a pretty good spot. And if I was a fish, I'd be hanging out here, so let's give it a go. So what I've learnt from you guys, and a bit of reading the internet, is yeah, Basically, foam is home, so cast up towards the, the rapids, and the trout sort of waiting for any, um, yeah, any food to sort of be washed down. And don't you hate it when your hook gets caught over the line? So, yeah, basically, your lure doesn't swim straight. This is a pretty tricky stream for a, a novice like myself. It's very skinny and uh, yeah, lots of uh, shrub on the side, so quite easy to get tangled up. Oh. <laughs> uh, as I was saying, <laughs> absolute rookie. All right, <laughs> one more go. That's a bit better. Alright, well I think I'll move on because I'm pretty sure the fish definitely know I'm here by now. Yeah, not really having much luck at the moment. I'm hoping this little pool might be a uh, deliver the goods. <laughs> Straight into a shrub. <laughs> not, that's not the best start. Let's do that one again. That's better. Oh! Oh, I just had a strike. Might be a bit scared off now. No, I think they've caught on to me. Oh, I'm pretty exhausted, eh? Walking up that stream is a uh, yeah, pretty tough work. I'm so parched, though. Um, finished all my water, so I gotta go yeah, filter some water and get that into me because I'm very thirsty. So, I think that'll be the first course of action. Then I might have um, yeah, a quick little lunch break and then yeah, I'll just continue up the stream a little bit. It doesn't go for too much, so this kind of flat section doesn't go for too much further. Um, just over there, probably another couple hundred meters. And then it sort of goes into a bit of a, I don't know, a ravine or something. It's kind of two steep hills on either side. So uh, I think there's meant to be sort of some like cascades and little waterfalls up there. Um, and perhaps some big pools with some trout in it. So I'll try and make my way up there. Um, it's going to be interesting to see how I go sort of hiking up through it. Uh, especially with like a full pack on and stuff like this. Ideally, I would have liked to have tried to find a nice campsite around here. Um, sort of set up a base camp and then just kind of do some... Yeah, so we'll scouting missions to go fishing, but it's really, it's pretty slim pickings in terms of a good campsite. Like, this is probably one of the best ones I've seen, to be honest. And that's just camping on rock. Because like I said yesterday, it's just, um, 
all this is just grass, so I don't really want to camp on top of that, but I'm going to have a fire, so. Yeah, I'll have to, I don't know, try and keep my eyes out for a half decent campsite because it's already about two o'clock. Um, so like I said, I'll go up for a little bit further and but I still want to try and keep an eye out um, so we can get too much later and then, yeah, kind of get stuck um, trying to find a campsite, so. Anyway, um, first things first is let's get some water. this man there are so many flies around today crazy you just got your standard little normal flies but then these there's these big sort of bush flies that just keep biting as well and they're massive too bloody everywhere so between between ants and flies having a wonderful day nah, actually really enjoying it so really beautiful place to yeah, just come and explore Pretty got pretty lucky as well. What third cast managed to get a either a brook trout or a brown trout. Not quite sure. I'll have to look it up when I get home because I'm not too up to date with my yeah my trouts. So I have to have a look. If you guys know, just let us know. But it might be a bit hard to tell from the footage. Um, but I was pretty stoked with that third cast. So can't complain about that. Just got some biltong for lunch. Never do wrong with biltong. It's a shame I couldn't really get that. That second trout um, couldn't land him properly. He obviously wasn't hooked properly, and so there, yeah, just kind of, <laughs> since I took me out of the water, just fell straight out. So that's a bit of a shame. And apart from that, I pretty much only had one other decent strike from a, a fish, but it didn't sort of take it properly. So not a huge amount of luck today, but can't complain with um, at least one properly caught fish so pretty happy with that not quite sure if I, <laughs> I'm going to be regretting later the fact that I got my boots wet so obviously it's uh, they're probably going to take a little bit of time to dry and like I said it's about two o'clock so it really depends how much more like further I keep going because I leave it till quite late it means I'm going to have um, yeah, wet boots through the night and then probably into tomorrow so and obviously you saw how cold it got last night. They're probably going to um, freeze overnight. So might not have been the best decision, but seriously, I was just getting hammered by ants. So I had to walk in the water. There's no way I could get around it. Maybe next time I have to come a bit more prepared. Maybe get some um, yeah, wading boots or something like that. Could try and walk bare feet, but I don't know, it's just all pebbles. It'd be pretty uncomfortable, I reckon. All right, I'm just gonna finish off some, some lunch and then um, I'll get back out there and continue fishing. So I'll get back to you guys in a bit. Yeah, so here's a pretty nice grassy meadow. Probably could camp here, still not ideal, um, but it's not as lumpy as um, other spots, so you probably could flatten out a bit. Just over here where those sticks are, someone has had a fire. You also see an old rusty water tank over there as well. Uh, but yeah, it'd be nice if I could try and tuck up in the trees and camp up amongst them, but as you can see, it's such thick, thick scrub, so there's no way you can camp up amongst the trees. So yeah, like I could probably camp here, but it's still not ideal. Um, and plus, there are bloody ants everywhere. 
I've never been somewhere where there's so many ants. It's insane. No matter where I stand, within a few seconds, I'm just crawling in ants. So, don't really want to be sleeping around here, to be honest. Um, even though I do have a, a bivy, it's just going to be pretty uncomfortable just when I'm just walking around and just sitting down. So, yeah, I don't know. A little bit uh, stuck for choice, to be honest. I think this is probably going to be um, one of the best spots in this area. Probably should have stayed back where I stayed last night. I think that's probably going to be... Um, Probably the best spot, but I don't know. Anyway, I'll have a little bit more of a wander around, and then I'll um, yeah make the call what I want to do. All right, just so you guys can see, I'm absolutely crawling in ants. <laughs> All right, that's enough. So just so you guys um, know, I'm not joking. They are everywhere. Yes, yeah, so this is where I was hoping to hike up the stream up towards these sort of little waterfalls and cascades, but it is so dense and scrubby. It's almost impenetrable. Um, yeah, I've had a little go, but it's really, really thick. So I don't know if I really feel like doing that today because I'm pretty, pretty, pretty buggered already. So I might try for a little bit longer. Um, otherwise, I might just go back because, yeah, not quite in the mood for it today. Uh, it's quite unfortunate because I really want to go up here, but just the way it goes sometimes. Um, things don't always work to plan, so. All right, well, I think I'm gonna probably go back to pretty much where I camped last night because I'm just having a look around this sort of clear area again and there's just ants galore. Like, right now I've just got ants crawling all over me, so. Usually I'm not, uh, not, too, not too fast about ants, but here they are insane. They're probably the worst I've ever seen, so yeah, every time I just stop, I'm just getting um, crawled all over, so I think I'm probably going to yeah, make my way back to where I was camped last night, which is probably about, I think it's about a K and a half, so it's not very far. Um, probably take me about an hour and a half or so to hike back there, uh, which is a bit of a pain, but <laughs> I'm getting bitten all over right now, so. I think it's the only option. If I had a tent, maybe um, then I'd probably camp here, but just having the bivy, I'm not gonna spend the whole afternoon and the night in the bivy, so um, yeah, basically just when I'm outside of the bivy, I'm just gonna be eaten alive, so I'm not really keen for that tonight. So, all right, well, I'm gonna make my way back, um, like a dog retreating with his tail between his legs, but sometimes that's the way it goes, so. It's always a gamble when you come out here and you're not really sure what to expect. Um, Sometimes things can go right and you can find perfect campsites. Other times, places like this, which I thought would have been easy to camp considering it's just grassy meadows, it's proven pretty difficult. So, But that's the way it goes. Anyway, um, yeah, let's head on back. So for those of you who don't know what this is, this is a wombat burrow. Interesting fact about wombats is they actually have square poo and uh, they tend to yeah, poo on top of logs and things like that so they can sort of, uh, I think it's so they can mark the territory. Not quite sure, but um, yeah, it's pretty interesting. I think it's one of the only animals that actually has square poo. Interesting fact for the day. Yeah, so putting the end issue aside, this place is stunningly beautiful. Really glad I came to check it out. Alright, well I'm back at Old Faithful and uh, I think I made the right decision, eh? It's a pretty nice spot, so I'm actually not quite sure why I left in the first place. You're looking straight up the valley and you've got a beautiful stream running right behind you, so it's pretty hard to beat. Obviously, I did want to camp right at the end, but sometimes things don't really go to plan, so just got to yeah, roll with it. But uh, 
I'm pretty glad to be back here. It's definitely a lot less ants here, which is good. Even though you've got the duck jumper ants over there, they tend to keep to themselves, which is nice. Um, but those little tiny black ants, man, they made life, my life hell before. So I'm glad to be back here. Anyway, I'm going to get camp set up and then uh, you will get the rod out again and go for a fish because I saw a trout jump out before. So fingers crossed we're going to get another one before dinner. Yeah, so because I got a fair bit of build up of frost on the bivy last night, I'm thinking about using my um, new Alton Goods 3x3 meter tarp to construct a simple shelter, probably like a little lean to or something like that. Just so that way any of the dew or moisture throughout the night builds up on the tarp rather than the bivy. Because um, obviously last night when it got down to freezing, I basically turned this thing into a little ice box. So if I can yeah, get it to form on this rather than the bivy, I think that'll help me out a lot. But I'm um, pretty keen to test it out, eh? I um, only got this the other day. So I haven't had a chance to um, try it out in the bush yet. First impressions, I really like it. It's really small and lightweight. Um, I think it weighs about 790 grams. I think it's made from 30D ripstop nylon. So nice and lightweight. Um, and all the pegs are um, yeah, nice and lightweight aluminiums. And the guy ropes are made out of, uh, I think it's called Dyneema, which is one of the world's strongest fibers. So I think that's how they managed to sort of get it down to a pretty, um, pretty lightweight package. So yeah, pretty keen to test it out. So um, yeah, we've, um, there's a fair bit of fallen timber around here that's been left over from, from someone else. So I'm gonna utilize that and use that to create the post because there's not too many trees to sort of tie off to here. Um, and yeah, I think that should do the job. So yeah, let's get that going. Yeah, so the guy ropes have uh, this little locking mechanism, which I actually think works really well compared to the old school ones that I uh, sort of grew up having. These ones seem to work quite well. So I'm just going to wrap this around the rock because uh, <laughs> there's not a whole lot of soil here. So I'm pretty, when I try, try and drive these pegs in, they're basically just hitting rock. So I'm just going to put that in. And then you just get this little plastic locker and just slide it up. And then you just pull that down and it locks in. It's got these little teeth here that, that bite down on the on the cord. So the benefit of a rock is you can just always move it further back to tighten it up as well. So yeah, quite like this. Never seen this kind of cordage before. So I think it's called yeah, Dyneema. Seems to be um yeah pretty pretty good. Yeah, cool. I'm actually pretty happy with that, eh? Kind of felt a bit lonely just having the bivy all by itself, but having the, the shelter over it really makes it feel like a bit of a home. And so that should really help tonight, keeping that uh, yeah, that frost off me, because sure got pretty chilly last night, so hopefully this will, um, will help me out a bit. Yeah, pretty stoked with it.
Actually, something I wanted to point out that sort of sets this type apart from most other 3 by 3 meter types is usually 3 by 3 meter types just have the tire points going down the, the middle ridge. But um, Olden Goods have actually put down a few extra tire points along the sort of that section there, sort of like a quarter in on both sides. That way you can kind of do this kind of configuration. Like I didn't do it here, but it probably would actually be quite handy if I've had a ridge line going right across and then using utilizing those tire points. And it's also got, because it's got these extra tire points, it means that when you have a hammock, you could actually run a ridge line from that corner to the other corner, which most other types you can't do. Um, you kind of only just got that middle ridge line to work with, but this one allows you to kind of do a, like a diamond shape, uh, which I think is pretty, pretty, um, pretty cool. Makes it pretty useful. So yeah, just another few little features this one has compared to some of the other ones. I don't want to go too much further up, so I'll give this a quick go, then I might make my way back towards camp. Pretty well hooked. Oh mate, you have done a real number on yourself. That's some pliers. He's literally got every hook in him. Come on. There we go. Quickly just show you what we've got. Is that a brook trout or a brown trout? Not quite sure, so. Anyway, you guys, let me know, but it's a beautiful little fish, so I'll pop them back. Well, that was awesome. He was a beautiful little guy. He wasn't the biggest fish in the world, but, you know, size doesn't always matter. Just uh, give this spot a few more casts, and then uh, we'll move on. Oh man, that temperature just started to drop a fair bit now. So it's about eight o'clock. So I might head on back towards camp and uh, get this fire started and get some dinner on because last night I was eating at 10 o'clock at night. <laughs> it's uh, not ideal. So go back and we'll get some grub on.
So I've pretty much used up all my child material. So I'm just gonna use these bits of old cotton rag that I've got. Actually, it's my old um, cotton tea towel. So just gonna char them in the fire so that way uh, next time I wanna get a fire started, I'm all good to go. Yeah, especially when the smoke and the flames stop coming out that top little hole, you know it's uh, been charred. So I'll just take that out of the fire and let it cool down for a bit. Yeah, so we just open that up. You can see the, the cotton has now been charred, so yeah, be able to use that to get my fire started next time. Alright, so let's get the grill on. Oh, it's a little bit too wide. Just fits. Actually, first, let's scrape some more um, of these big coals in there. Alright, so if it's nice dinner, I'm gonna make like a little Buddha bowl. So it's got some sweet potato, it's got red cabbage, it's got uh, pak choy, I've just got some satay tofu, and then there's like a really nice peanut dressing to go all over it. Super, super tasty. Doesn't sound the greatest, but trust me, it is so delicious. And um, first time actually bringing tofu into the bush, so let's gonna see how um, how this turns out. I'm actually probably gonna lose a lot of a lot of subscribers the fact that I'm um, eating tofu. But trust me, if you cook it right, it's actually really nice. So don't diss it just yet. Um, all right, so we'll just chop up some of this sweet potato. Actually, before I do that. Let's get my trusty little chopping board. So we'll just dice them up into quarters. Ideally you would want to um, yeah, roast this in the oven, but I kind of am lacking in an oven out here. And I, I could chuck in the fire in like foil, but I don't know, I'm going to give it a, a go this way, I think it should work out. Always remember to take out the chopping board before you put it in the fire. I've learned that lesson the hard way. So I'm just going to add some oil to this. Anyway, so I just um, yeah, chuck this on and just cook this up for a bit and then I'll add the other ingredients. Alright, so that's sweet potato is starting to cook through now, so I'm going to add the other ingredients. Uh, so first up, so I might take this off the heat while I do this, because I'll probably need this as a plate to chop up on. So I'll just get the, the tofu. Ah, oh, no. Always losing my food. One of these days, someone will make me a bigger plate. So just chop up the tofu. It's so funny how so many people um, yeah, put up their nose towards tofu. I don't think people really um, have it the right way. If you cook it in the, the right meal, it's actually quite nice. It's just one of those things though. It always divides people, doesn't it? Alright, so with that, and then we'll put in some. This does not look the best in here. All this red cabbage is just. <laughs> so, before I came, the red cabbage was soaked in um, white wine vinegar and a bit of olive oil, just to kind of give it a bit of a tang. Um, so, it's probably started to yeah, fer um, fermentate or something. Anyway, so. <laughs> oh, this looks pretty rough. That definitely looks rough, so let's take that bit off. Right. Oh man, I need a bigger bowl. So, just gonna, if I can, try and chop all this up. Alright, so I'm not cooking the red cabbage, I'm just cooking this stuff. So I'll chuck this back on the heat and um, yeah, heat it up. All 
All right, well, I think that's about done. So I'll take that off and we'll add the other ingredients. So I've just added the red cabbage. And like I said, that's just um, tossed around in a bowl with some white wine and vinegar and some olive oil, just to give it a little bit of a, a tangy zest to it. And then so in here we've got the sardé dressing. So this is made up of peanut butter, um, like smooth peanut butter, with some brown sugar, some white, a little bit of white wine vinegar, um, hot water, just a little bit of hot water, just to mix it up to get a nice consistency, and a little bit of soy sauce. So that's it, and it's super, super nice. So we'll just pour this all over it. If it wants to come out. It's a little bit hard to get out. I might just add a little bit of water to this. I should be able to swish it out. That's better. Perfect. Okay, so just uh, mix that around. Just uh, and some lime juice. Oh man, this is smelling so, so good. Yeah, so there you have it, the Buddha bowl. And it actually actually pretty easy to cook up in the bush, wasn't, wasn't too difficult. So, yeah, let's dig in. Oh, I'm so keen for this. So guys, I don't mind my arm. <laughs> shoes around the fire I'm trying to dry them out I don't think they're going to dry out anytime soon I think they're going to be wet for the next couple of days to be honest probably wasn't the best idea to fully soak your boots but um, yeah the alternative was to walk around the banks and just get eaten by ants and I wasn't keen for that so wet boots it is alright let's dig in Oh man, that is delicious. I highly recommend trying to cook this at home. This is so, so good. I'm well, pretty stoked with my um, effort today. Managed to catch two, I think there might be brown trout. Maybe not brook trout, there might be brown trout, but um, I'll have a look when I get home. But I managed to catch two of them, which is, uh, I was pretty stoked with. I would have been happy with just one, so almost got a third one, but not quite. It's a, it's a lovely place to come and fish. It's a really, really beautiful spot. So, pretty keen to try and do a bit more of the snowy mountains. There's so many rivers and streams and stuff like this that are just stocked with um, trout. So, and Kosciuszko, Kosciuszko National Park is massive. It's probably, I think it might be the second biggest. I think Walmart National Park is the biggest. This might be the second biggest, or well, vice versa. So, I have plenty of places to go explore. The only issue is it's bloody far from home. It takes, yeah, about six and a half hours or so to get here. So, yeah, a bit of a trek, but um, once you're here, worth it it's a really really nice place so obviously come down here i always come down in the snow down here but i've never done a yeah summer trip and actually camped so yeah i think i've been um, missing out this whole time so i'm really glad that i managed to get this trip in just to be a yeah, fish in a high mountain stream in the middle of the snowy mountains it's a pretty good feeling You're all by yourself too there's no one else around so cannot complain Right, well, it's 10 o'clock again. Crazy. Because the sun doesn't set till 8.30, so it's proper dark at about quarter to nine, about nine o'clock. My body clock just goes with the sun, so yeah. <laughs> that's, that's why I'm eating at 10 o'clock at night every time I go camping, it's crazy. Um, it'd be nice to try and get more of a routine where I eat at 6.30, 7 o'clock, but I know I won't do it, so. Yeah, it's just the way it is. Anyway, um, let's finish this off, go to bed pretty soon, and then, um, yeah, I'll speak to you guys tomorrow. So, catch you then.
it's starting to get pretty hot now. It's crazy how quickly it warms up. Um, we're gonna have to start stripping down some layers pretty soon. Uh, so I think today's plan, I might actually um, probably head home today, I think. I had originally planned to stay one more night, but because uh, yesterday didn't quite go to plan, I was kind of hoping to, there's it up on one of these, um, sort of these hills up the top of it, there's a big meadow um, and this, this creek goes all the way up on, t on top of that meadow and flows through it and apparently there's an old hut up there and stuff. So I wanted to sort of try and camp up there, but uh, I don't think I'll have, yeah, because I didn't really go to plan yesterday, I thought I was going to be able to sort of camp up near that section, but now that I'm a fair distance away, I don't know if I sort of have enough time to sort of get up there, camp up there tonight and then get all the way back to my car tomorrow and then drive home um, it's, that'd be a pretty big day so I'm thinking I probably just might call it quits um, today and just yeah pack this down and then there is a section of the, um, the the stream that I haven't fished yet so on the way back to my car I might sort of stop and um, fish a few of those um, pools on the way back um, but yeah then I think I might call it quits after that but I'm not too worried about it. it's been a really really nice trip I've really enjoyed this um, this place it's really beautiful it is a shame I didn't sort of get to go to that <clears throat> that section where sort of all the waterfalls and cascades are. But I was just <laughs> trying to log our cameras and stuff through there with all your fishing rod and your gear. That was an absolute nightmare yesterday. It's pretty thick scrub, so I don't know if I really feel like doing that again today. Um, that was a big day yesterday, so. Anyway, I think that might be the plan. So I'll just uh, finish this off and then pack all this down and then, um, yeah, I'll get on out of here pretty soon. So, yeah, I'll get back to you guys in a bit. I actually really like this type, eh? It's a, it's a nice colour, which is always a good thing. And the fact that it's got all these extra tie up points, um, yeah, it's a, it's a good bonus. So I'm actually pretty impressed with it. All right, cool. Well, the fire's taken care of now. Um, it's always a good idea to yeah, dismantle the fire ring and just yeah, throw the rocks away. Um, and obviously, yeah, wait till the, the hot coals are well and truly out before you start scattering them into the bush. But um, yeah, once they are well and truly out, I think it's a good idea just to get rid of them. That way um, you're sort of practicing the leave no trace mentality and that way the person who comes after me, they decide to camp here, um, they're not gonna see any remnants of me being here. So. It's always a, a good way to practice, and if everyone sort of practices a, yeah, the leave no trace, um, then I think we'd all be better off, so. All right, well, now that's all done. Um, let's pack on out of here, and we'll see if we can try and catch a fish on the way back.
Ooh, whoa. Like this. Come on. Damn it. You let go and the lure's now snagged in the little, little hedge there. Oh, come on. Damn it, he was a he was a good size. <laughs> oh no. The lure just fell off. <laughs> oh, I should probably go in and save him. Ah, oh, that sucks. He was a good size one too. Ah, oh, so close, so, so close. Oh, this is gonna be interesting. That is mighty cold. Ah, uh, that sucks. That was a, a good sized fish. Man, look at all the flies in my legs. They're having an absolute field day. Getting better with my casting. I must say. Got that straight up in the rapids. No, oh, no luck. I think we've got to call it a day now. Alright guys, well that's another trip done and dusted. Um, hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. I've had such a great time. This is a very beautiful place and like I said, I've been wanting to come to the high country for a very long time so I'm glad I could finally come and yeah, tick it off the list. And to catch a few trout, um, that's just a bonus, eh? I'm pretty stoked with myself, considering it's my first time trout fishing, so. Yeah, all in all, I think it was a really good trip, except for these body flies and these ants. <laughs> if they could just piss off, then it'd um, be even better. Um, anyway, yeah, so hope you guys enjoy this one, and as always, thanks so much for watching, and I really appreciate all your support, and uh, yeah, I'll see you guys next time. Hooroo.